Good day, folks. Today we're going to look at parallel circuits. We've already talked about parallel resistors, so let's just jump right in here. We're going to take a look at a voltage source over here with two parallel resistors. First resistor, we'll throw in here a value of 4K ohms. And the second resistor will be 12K ohms. I'm going to put on a 24 volt power supply. There's our polarity. So the first thing I want to indicate is where we're going with the currents, polarities, and so forth. So this plus to minus is the same as the drops on the two resistors, right? Remember, this is ideal. Ideal conductors, top and bottom. This point is this point is this point. So the key thing to remember here is in the parallel connection, voltage is the constant. Voltage is everywhere the same. Everywhere. Because you only have really two connection points when you get right down to it, right? You got this top one, this bottom one. All right. Given that, there should be an entering current. This is our source current. And we've got currents down through these two resistors. Call that one I1. We'll call this one I2. Now, just as in the voltage case, where you know, Kirchhoff's voltage law says the summation of voltage rises must equal the summation of voltage drops, there is a Kirchhoff's current law. And says something very similar. Namely, that the summation of currents entering a node have to equal the summation of currents exiting. Or you could say that the sum of all currents has to be zero, because obviously the enter and the exit are opposite directions, just like with the voltage. Summation of all voltages around a loop must be zero, right? The rises must equal the drops, opposite signs. So I like to write Kirchhoff's current law in this little shorthand form that the summation of currents coming in has to equal the summation of currents going out. What goes in must come out. All right. Now, given that, we can say that IS has to equal I1 plus I2. All right. How do we find those various currents? Well, a direct application of Ohm's law, right? The voltage is the same everywhere. So I1 would have to equal the 24 volts divided by R1, 4K. That's going to get us 6 mils. I2 would have to equal 24 volts divided by the 12K. And that is going to get us 2 mils. And before we go any further, I just want you to notice that's a 3 to 1 ratio in currents. Okay, what is the effective resistance of this thing? In other words, what is 4K in parallel with 12K? Well, these are actually the numbers we used last time around. Um, if we use product sum rule, 4K times 12K is 48 meg. Sum 16K, that's going to work out to 3K. So... Ohm's law would say if this whole thing is equivalent to a 3K, in other words, if the equivalent circuit looks like this, then this current would have to be, that's our IS, would have to be 24 volts over 3K, or 8 mils, which, when we add these up, is 8 mils. What goes in? must equal what comes out, all right? Okay. The other thing we can uh, do here, notice the ratio of the resistance, all right? So the ratio of the currents, I1 to I2 is 3 to 1. The ratio of the resistances, R1 to R2 is 4K to 12K. In other words, 1 to 3. All right, so 4K versus 12K is... One to three. So the resistance and the current
occurrence, they divide up an inverse relation. Okay, something useful to remember. All right, what if we turn around and we say, hey, let's add a third resistor. So we're going to add a third resistor out here. Let's say that's 6K for R3. All right, what does that do? Well, that third branch current would be 24 volts over 6K. All right, that's going to add in an extra 4 mils. So my total now should be the original 8 that we had plus 4, which is 12 mils. This is what it should be. The source current should be 4 plus 8 or 12 mils. Let's do a little cross check. If that's the case, if that's the case, Ohm's law would say the total resistance out here would have to be the voltage divided by the total current. 24 volts divided by 12 mils. Well, 24 over 12 is 2. Volts over milliamps is basically k ohms, so that's 2k ohms. That's what it's supposed to work out to. In other words, by adding the extra resistor, this guy turns into 2k. Well, simple question. Since I know the 4 and the 12 are 3, equivalent to 3, what is 3 in parallel with 6? Well, that's a 2 to 1 ratio. I'd get 2 thirds of the smaller, which is 2k. And there it goes. Nice cross check, eh? Beauty. Okay, so what happens if we replace the voltage source with a current source? Things are a little different now. I'm going to go back to the original two resistors. So we have a 4k and a 12k, and I'm going to use a 20 milliamp current source. What do we wind up with? While this current is still entering, this is still our source current. It's going to split down into these two paths. Now here we don't know what the voltage is up front. Right? Over here we knew 24 volts. I could divide out and find the individual currents. So what I have to do now, or at least one possibility, is to find out what this total resistance is. Then I can find the voltage. Then I can do this. All right? So we've already determined some of these values. We already know that um, you know, 4K in parallel with 12K is 3K. So this thing basically falls out this. Which would tell you through Ohm's law, this voltage would have to be 60 volts. And now you know the two individual currents, so you can find them very quickly, right? The first one would have to be 60 volts over 4K which would get you 15 mils, and I2 would have to be 60 volts divided by 12K, which would get you 5 mils. And of course that has to add up, according to KCL, to 20 mils, which is the source current. Okay? Beautiful. Now, that's all good, good and fine, but remember, we saw back here this ratio of resistance and the ratio of current being sort of flips, okay? It would still be the case that the current over here would have to divide up in inverse proportion. So I could use a proportional scheme to figure out what these two currents are. Now we can write that as a, a little equation. If, for example, I was interested in the, in the current through the 4K, and we'll call that R1, I want to find the current through R1. What we essentially did is we found the voltage across the, across the circuit, right? I'll just call that V, and then I just divided it by that particular resistor, R1, right? Found the voltage 60 divided by the resistor 4K, boom. Well, how did we find the voltage, right? V is the effective resistance times the current source. So the entering current times the parallel combo, which I'm going to write that in, in product sum rule form, R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. 
Now, if you substitute this in for V, your I of R1 works out to you know, that current times R1 over R2 divided by R1 plus R2, that whole thing divided by R1, which when you simplify that, I of R1 equals the entering current, in our case, the current source, times, notice the R1s are going to cancel here, the opposite resistor over the sum. Okay? So we could just say, oh, I want to find the current through the 4K. So that would be the entering current, which is 20 mils, times the opposite resistor, 12K, over the sum, 4K plus 12K, 16. So it's 12 over 16, which is 3 fourths. 3 fourths of 20 is, bingo, 15 milliamps. Oh, huh, beautiful. So this works out really well. Um, we call this the current divider rule. You know, we saw a similar thing with uh, voltage. Now, sometimes we call it CDR for short, CDR. Um, now there is a voltage divider rule and we find that the, you know, the voltage divides up in proportion to the size of the resistance. All right, the bigger the resistance is, the more voltage it gets when they're in series. Current divider rule is uh, a little bit limited in that it only works for two resistors. So, you, you know, voltage divider rule you could use on three resistors. So, or four resistors or five resistors. Um, current divider rule, at least this form of the current divider rule, only works on two. So, you, you can come up with a, um, an N resistor version of this, but the equation isn't like a nice, convenient, compact little equation. So, you're just better off doing what we did here. In other words, find the effective R, find the V, um, and then just use Ohm's law. Okay, this is just a nice little shortcut to remember if you have two components. Of course, if you have multiples, you could apply it multiple times, just like we could apply the product sum rule multiple times. But, you know, if you're just faced with uh, two resistors like this and you happen to know what the current is, it's a nice quick way of doing it. Okay, all right, that pretty much covers it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is a couple of uh, simulations just to verify what's going on here. All right. See you then.